How y'all doing? Good, you. Good, how are you? Yeah, good. We got safety, Aubrey Burks. Questions for Aubrey? Greg? So, Aubrey, start with, I don't want to say it's a huge position change for you, but we are learning a little bit more spur. So, played it some last year. Big change for you, if it were permanent, what, what would you think? Um, it's not going to be permanent. Um, I'll be playing both cat safety and the um, spur position. Um, probably for mainly for spring, my focus will be at spear, mainly because I played cat safety all um, last year and the year before. Um, the biggest difference to me, honestly, from spear to cat safety is the, the playing from down at five yards instead of playing at 10 or 12. Um, so just understanding like how far you got to drop, um, whether I got to drop back, um, get under the curl, stuff like that. That's probably the biggest change for me, making sure I'm not drifting off my landmark. Um, and I, I'll say that's probably honestly the biggest change. We haven't put on pads yet, so I can't really tell you about like run game and stuff. Um, as the spring go on, I can tell you like the difference between that. But as of now, mainly the, the biggest change is dropping back and coverage and stuff, whether it's 10 to 12, how far you got to get back and making sure you're not drifting all your landmark. One of the assets he thinks you bring is he feels you're a good blitzer. And <clears throat> that blitz position lends itself to blitzing. So do you like that? Do you think you're good at it? Yeah, I'll say I'm very twitchy. Um, I think my, my biggest skill of playing football, my IQ. So I understand the game a lot. Um, and so, you know, going through these two days, I have a blitz much, but a couple of times I have trying to get around um, Wyatt Milam. He, he's probably a top two, top first round, second round pick, so it's pretty hard. But he's definitely getting me better, and, and so far I've been liking it. What's this spring like? Because um, what, you've got four new guys in the secondary? Right. So. Um, it, it, it's been pretty good since they came in. Um, the whole the whole secondary actually get along. Um, Coach Shadon Brown has the whole secondary. Obviously, he have coaches helping them out. Um, but bringing us together, I feel like that was a big step, um, mainly because we can communicate the same. All of us in the same room for meetings, so we all like you know speaking the same language. And when we get on the field, we all know like the same same terms and everything. Um, mainly right now through these two days, I feel like we should keep working on our communication. Um, mainly because a lot of guys are new, um, so they probably, you know, a little nervous to speak up um, whether or not they make, like, saying the right things out there. So it's up to, like, me, Ant Wilson, the older guys who've been here, Montre Miller, guys like that, to help them out, um, to get them comfortable with speaking and everything. Bobby, where are you? A little bit more physical. Does that fit you a little bit better, your abilities a little better? Uh, as far as playing the spirit and being more physical? Um, like I said, I haven't like went through the physical part yet because um, we don't have on pads. Um, I believe I'm a physical person. I I'm not scared to come down and strike strike people uh, at the point of contact. Um, like I said, once we move on with spring ball, um, put on pads Friday and go through spring, you know, I can get a feel of like being physical in the trenches or, you know, whether the difference of playing from 10 yards and coming down and taking on a block or being at five and taking on the block. I really don't know how that feel yet um, until Friday so I can get an actual feeling of taking on somebody from five yards or, you know, meet somebody in the hole at two to three yards, something like that, which I didn't have to do really at safety. You played that with kind of a physical Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's just me in general, though, um, mm -hmm. just, you know, trying to be physical. Um, I was taught that back in high school, um, just, just being physical. And, and we work on tackling. Yeah, yeah, Y'all know they preach it every time. Tackling is a big emphasis for us from last year, and it's going to be the same this year. Coach Leslie already said once we put on pass, even without pass, we hit each other, but once we put them on, the whole defense know what time it is. So I feel like I'm going to be OK just, just being down there, being physical. Bobby, where are you mentally? Because obviously last year, kind of a roller coaster ride mentally right. with what happened to you. And then you even talked about the end of the season kind of getting back mentally as well. Where would you say your, your, your mental health is where um, you are mentally? Right mentally, now? I, I'm good. I'm at contract year. Um, when I met with Coach Brown at the end of the year, that's what we, we both said. It was contract year. I graduated in December. Um, football here is over for me in December. So just from here to now, I got all the way into December to just you know stay focused and do everything I got to do in the classroom, on the field. Um, but mentally, I've been I've been good. You know, hanging around these guys every day, it don't get no better than this. So. Harvey, you mentioned newcomers, and there are a lot on the defensive side. So give me a, a little bit of coaching analysis on some, especially the secondary guys. What do you see out of them? Um, so Jaheem, the the safety transfer from um, Northwestern, um, very very quick guy. Um, smart, um, so far catching up on the playbook. Um, um, Aiden, Aiden from Duquesne, very, very long arms, can run. He can run super fast. Um, then we have another corner that transferred. Um, he's very long, 6'2", Garnett. 
um, six two, I think six one, long arms, and he can he can play the press. Um, I haven't seen much just from the first two days. You know, it's only two days, um, but at time I feel like they're going to be pretty good players who can help you know help us go on the run for the Big Twelve Championship. Um, I'm pretty sure that's that's the three we brought in. Um, oh, oh, Crandall, T.J. Crandall. He's another guy who he's young though. He's young, but he he played a lot of football at Colorado State for his first year, so that's pretty impressive. Um, he knows you know big time football. Um, he knows, you know, power five, uh, playing a game out here, um, just playing football in general. And he's a guy who can run, too, and I feel like that's another guy who's going to help us. Um, it's a lot of young guys we brought in. I mean, a lot of young guys we got already on, on a roster that in the secondary room who's stepping up, who we need to step up this spring to help us in the fall. Well, now that you've been in, this, in the NIL era between seasons, do you hear from other schools? Uh, do you have an agent to handle that? Do uh, you know? Uh, how do you let know that you don't want to go somewhere else? Or you know, how, how it, it, it's um, a yes or a no. Um, you either tell them, yeah, I'm interested, or no, I'm not. Um, I, I wouldn't say yeah, my last year was was a pretty hectic after the end of the season. Um, my sophomore year, going into my junior, that was pretty hectic. Um, this year, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as people trying to reach out. Um, I, I I've been here for this one on my fourth year. Been here for three years, the same coaching staff. I don't really want to go nowhere else and try to, you know, try to pick up on the playbook. So, just being around the same coaching staff and not many changes here is a big reason why I stay here because I'm comfortable here. So, there's no reason for me to leave to chase after some money. You know what I'm saying? When I'm playing here, I'm on the field. I got one year left of football and one year left of school to graduate. I don't think there's no need for me to try to go somewhere else and, you know, mess up. Do people, do people contact you though? And just to you know, fill you out. I, I I I don't want to put that business out there because I don't want to speak on that right now. Um, so yeah, I, I don't want to speak on that. I'm sorry. When you were looking at new players coming in, what are the things you look at to figure out, hey, I think this guy can help us early? Is it necessarily scrimmage plays, full things? Is it drills? Are there a couple things you kind of uh, – Really just how do you compete. Um, somebody come in and say, I want, I want Aubrey Burks out there to go against. Then I know, okay, yeah, he wants it. Because, you know, why not call out – you know, try to call out the best of the best when you get out there where in a winter we're competing for a little, little competition sprints, anything like that. So whoever just come out there and compete, I know you got some type of grit to you, some attitude to you. Um, that's the first thing I look at. And then I just kind of like talk to people, you know, build relationships with them, understand like where they come from, how their background was. And then, you know, as time goes on, I kind of get a feel for them and see who they really are and stuff. How much can you tell before putting pads on? I mean, you can tell who can run in some of those things. But can you, you really tell who can play football? Mm. Uh, in two days, can you tell? I, I feel like you can tell a little bit. Um, um, it's one guy I can say, Jay Bray, um, he came from Oklahoma State, the receiver. He kind of pops off the charts to me. The, these two days I seen him at re, um, receiver, I was like, okay, that, that's, that can be a guy right there. That's, that can be a guy right there. So um, I, I, you can tell a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to tell because um, when you put on pass, that's when you can tackle. You know what I'm saying? You can see true action of putting your hands on somebody. Right now we got on little, little, little pennies or whatever you want to call it. You can't really be too physical out there. You don't want to get nobody hurt. We got to stay off the ground a lot. So based off these two days, I can tell a little bit, but not a lot. Um, Friday, most of it would kind of show. Understanding that, what is it about him that stands out? Um, his speed. Um, he called a screen today, actually. Um, he called a screen, and I was on the um, other side of the field, but he cut it towards my way, and I could see, like, the change. Like, when he was around, I was like, okay, he, he, he got some wheels on him. And then just I, I seen a couple of those one-on-ones um, through film and stuff like that, and just watching him. Um, you know, just seeing how he get out of his routes and everything, out of his cuts, I really like that. Um, so that's one guy who pops off the charts um, that I've seen so far. Um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more guys coming up through the spring who going who gonna to show that they can help us in the fall. You talk about receivers. What about some of the young receivers that played a lot last year? Baker Stronger for Traylon Ray, Rodney Gallagher? Um, what have you seen from them? Um, T. Ray and um, Rod, they're, they're both going to be great players. Um, that that's a trio, T. Ray, Rod, and Jaheim. That freshman trio, they're go, they all going to be great players. Um, T. Ray, he he's going to be a dog. Um, he's phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, the catch he made out there today, I'm not sure if, if y'all was watching. Um, many thought it was going to touch the ground. He picked it up basically off the ground, barely. Um, that just caught my attention. But both of those guys, Rodney, you know, hit the first day of um, practice, he gave me some looks. So I was kind of like shocked. Okay, like he's bringing it. He's ready. So them, them two guys, they stepped up big and they took it serious through the winter, um, just perfecting their craft and it's showing. Your analysis here of the wide receivers, how much kind of communication do you guys have 
between them to you or you to them just to try and kind of help the group as a whole? As far as outside of football, outside of the facility? Yeah. Uh, I hang out I hang out with those guys a lot. Um, just, just to be around my teammates. I wouldn't rather be around nobody else. I hang out with defensive people too, but it's, it's kind of fun to interact with both sides of the football so they can understand understand me and I understand them. And just, as far as in the facility, um, how, how do you guys communicate in order to kind of they 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 ask me what I see because I'm I'm very smart at, um smart football player so they just be asking me little things that what I see can trying to dictate what they're going to do and I tell them little things as far as if you see the safety doing this then this might happen um, just football talk like that usually they hang around a group in the facility and I hang around my DBs but outside of the facility I'll, I'll get in contact with them just hang around them for some time. Nah, nah. So shadow boxing, it, it hasn't been been major in the locker room. Um, it kind of it kind of went away. Um, we haven't honestly just been talking. That's all we do now. There's no more shadow boxing. Um, I can say this: the the little Orby guns. We play with them a lot, like back at home and stuff. That's probably what took place. But other than that, it's no more shadow boxing. You mentioned uh, getting Montre Miller back. How, how, just kind of how is he? Because I'm I'm sure he was. Bummed the last year he went through the hall, came here to play, and didn't get to play. Just how is he kind of, is he reinvigorated? Uh, I, talk, I, I spoke with Muncher before the spring because I, I had a so, so shoulder injury that I had to overcome um, before spring of my, my sophomore year. And he told me, like, they're going to see what's about to happen. They're going to see what um, they missed out on last year. So I feel like that speaks for itself. Um, I feel like he's going to be a great player. Um, I have no doubt that he can help us in the fall. I have no doubt he's not going to be scared to go out there and play just because he had a shoulder injury. Um, but from talking to him before spring, he sounds like he's ready to go. Hey, Arthur, you mentioned um, the contract year. I get that for a right. But like, in a way now, with um, the NIL that is in those end of the meeting, end of the year, you have to coach. Like, every season, the contract year, to some extent. I, I, want, I want the contract year is not based off um, the NIL part. It was more of like, like, this is it. If you don't handle your business, then it's all over. Like you, you graduate and just football is football now. He he was mainly telling me contract your eyes, you graduate and then now you off to chase your real dreams, the real money, not not no nil money or something like that. You trying to go bigger than big, um, and so that's pretty much what he kind of meant through contract year. Um, instead of focusing on this little money that you can get through nil, how about you take that next step in December? After December, go train, and then when it's time to go to the NFL, now you know what I'm saying you could try to get a real contract, not no nil contract. Yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely. Right. Um, so, so every year, you definitely right. People can get cut. Um, my job, honestly, is to, to take care of me and do my job out there on the field and try not to get cut. Um, I can I can say this in our in our locker room um, last year, it was pretty hectic about nil. Um, this year, our team is just focused on ball. You know, NIL is just going to come, and I tell everybody this. If you want NIL money, you got to go produce on the field first. You can't talk about NIL money with no production. So you got to go make plays, and then when you make plays, that's when you can go in there and try to, you know, negotiate a, a deal through NIL and everything like that. Because it's a quote-unquote contract year for you, how do you stay focused and not worry too much about where projections are, like PFF grades, things like that for you, because as you're mentioning, those things, like them or not, are, are more important for you as an individual because right. you are going in a contract year, but yet you have a season ahead and want, it, want to focus on the team. Too. Uh, um, I, talk, I, I don't have an agent, but I talked to Dante Steele's agent, and, and the first thing he told me, he was like, I'm never going to tell you if you're going to go fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, or whatever that the case may be. He told me nobody knows what round they're really going to go until the day of the draft. So if you see some mock draft say you're going third or you see some mock draft say you're going fourth, just look at it, delete it, and go about your business. So all the mock draft and everything, I'm not looking at that. Um, like he's like, I took his words and I told myself, I don't know what round I'm going to go until the draft day. All I know is if I handle my things on the field in the classroom, then that, that stuff should come with it. Is it different being in this situation now? Knowing that the NFL is out there a year from now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, time, time's ticking, um, and, and it went by fast. I, I still remember when I was living at U Park. Um, still remember the VTech game when we played them here. Just things like that. And I look back, I was like, dang, I was just a freshman. Now I'm, I'm a senior now. And so just, just knowing that time is ticking, just knowing that I got to do everything I can, and my ability to make sure I, I'm, I'm comfortable in December, and I know I'm in a good spot after December.
Thank y'all. Y'all have a good day.